This 19 years old girl complained about protrusive lips and anterior open butt. Take a closer look. There are close by here and open by for other incisors. She also complained about difficulties in biting ramen noodles with her rough teeth. <laughs> the flared incisors may be a primary cause of her protrusive lips. And her humble request was, Doctor, can I have invisible treatment, please? Just fix my protrusive lips, anterior open bite, and flared incisors. The DI was 26. Most of the scoring was due to her high mandibular fat angle. Our treatment plan was four by extraction and the IGC screws could be used as a backup plan for lip <coughs> extraction. Only 14 months. We have improved her profile a lot, haven't we? The patient was very happy with her beautiful smile. Let's have a look at the set. The protrusive lips and proclined incisors have been improved. However, the side effect of a liner, posterior open bite, was also noticed. How did that happen? Sometimes it's easier said than done. Predicted tooth movement does not always match the achieved. There are real differences between predicted and achieved tooth movement. In the Invisalign clean check software, we can see the predicted tooth movement of every single tooth. This 3D computer technology is amazing, but unpredictable. AI, it's great. We are the real deal. So what we did was, we measured the actual movement of every tooth. Here, the upper incisor was extruded 4.1 millimeters more than we predicted. The worst result happened in the lower dentition. The lower six was tipped medially 3.5 degrees more than predicted. Especially in the lower anterior teeth, the top loss was 12.8 degrees lingually, and the lower incisors were extruded 3 millimeters more than had been predicted. <coughs> To summarize this problem, the posterior anchorage loss and intrusion were not obvious, but the anterior torque loss and extrusion were obvious, which may have resulted in premature contact when patient was biting. Of course, the posterior teeth couldn't occlude with each other. That's why we can see obvious posterior open bite, but without any posterior teeth intrusion in self superimposition. Therefore, we need additional aligner treatment. Before we look at the additional aligner treatment, I just want to tell you what we learned from this case so far. The patient was very happy to the current result of only 14 months treatment. And from doctor's view, there were not severe side effects which are often noticed in many 4 by extraction cases. There were three keys to the first stage success. Modified G6 attachment design. We put vertical attachments instead of optimized attachments to first molars. The vertical attachments provide better anchorage control and prevent severe mesial tipping and intrusion. The second key is sequential mesialization. The right window shows the default G6 simulation. Ladies and gentlemen, is this simulation actually possible? There is not any posterior teeth movement when closing the extraction spaces. Does that follow the Newton's third law? The action and reaction law? No, it is impossible. Please see the left window. We designed this sequential visualization. Can you see the reciprocal movement when closing the extraction spaces? That is more reasonable. I would like to draw your attention to the false marks. There are 
about one to one point five millimeter gaps between posterities during sequential visualization. Why are these gaps between teeth so important? We all know that the collider is just a piece of plastic. It pushes better than pulls, and it pushes what it touches. The one to one point five millimeter gaps allow the plastic to fold into the gaps. Now, the contact areas have been increased, and the active surfaces were also improved. That's why we could control posterior anchorage. The third key is to distalize canines before incisors. Again, we left 1.5 millimeter gaps between these teeth. The yellow areas are active surfaces. That's better for fitness and control. Modified G6 attachment design. Sequential visualization. Distalize canines before incisors. These are the three keys to the first stage of success. Let's move on to the additional liner treatment. What should we notice when designing the additional liner treatment? There are three steps we could fine tune her occlusion. First is to procline and intrude the lower anterior teeth for alleviating the anterior premature content. The second step is to fit posterior occlusion with aligners, just as that in the clean check software. Or the third step, bump buttons and use vertical elastic to settle down posterior occlusion. Only fairy tale have a happy ending. If we follow the three keys to success and the three steps of additional liner treatment, we won't have a fairy tale, but there will be a happy ending with our patient. And I hope all of you can enjoy happy ending with your patients. Thank you.